Welcome to the second edition of Score Better Future Credit Conversations presented by FICO, where we break down different important topics around credit and your FICO scores. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Quinn, and I work in the scores team supporting our solutions that help people become more credit empowered. Widespread adoption of credit scoring by financial institutions over the last 30 years has made credit more available and more affordable to many, many people. But there are still some people out there who can't receive a credit score based on the credit bureau data alone. We're here to talk about alternative data, which holds great potential for expanding access to credit to more consumers. Here to shed some light on the subject is Vice President of Scores and Analytics, Joanne Gaskin. Great to see you, Joanne. Hey, Tom, thank you. It's great to see you as well. I'm so happy to be here and part of this discussion. Absolutely, so let's get started. Um, can you expand on who does not receive a FICO score and the reasons why someone may not be able to have a FICO score? Absolutely, Tom. So, you know, for a bit of background for um, those viewers that may not be as familiar with the FICO score, you know, it is a number that's typically calculated from the data in your credit reports. And they're housed at the three major credit bureaus, which are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. You know, for um, the last 30 years, FICO has continued to analyze the minimum amount of credit bureau data that's necessary to deliver a reliable, predictive FICO score to the market. And that benefits both consumers and lenders alike. And so, you know, the um, criterion is relatively simple. Uh, so the first item is that the credit report can't uh, indicate that the consumer is deceased. Uh, so that seems to make a great deal of sense to most everybody. The next or second is just that you must at least have a, a given trade line or a credit obligation. So that could be an auto, a mortgage, student loan that's been reported to the credit bureaus within the last six months. Awesome. So if uh, my younger niece who just started uh, getting credit has a, a target score that a target score card that she opened seven months ago and used over the holiday period. So it's been updated. That would be enough to generate a FICO score? Yes, Tom, that's it, correct. And you know, for the inexperienced, starting with a credit card from like a store um, is a great place to start building your credit. Great, great insight there. Do we uh, know how many people can or can't receive a score in general? Yes. So, you know, from the information that we have available to us from the credit bureaus, what we find is the majority of the U.S. population can meet the requirement that we just discussed. Um, and so, but the, and actually over 90 percent of all credit applicants get access to a FICO score. But um, we're not done with making certain that we are uh, focusing on credit inclusion at FICO, there's 53 million Americans who don't receive a credit a score through a traditional credit bureau data alone. And so then it's because these consumers either have no credit bureau file at all, or they have a credit bureau file, but the information is insufficient for um, reliable credit scoring. So based on what I just heard, would one idea potentially be to just loosen our minimum score criteria and that'll get more people scored? Well, I have heard that suggestion before as well, Tom, but we would think that that's probably not the best opportunity for us because we do believe that if we, um, FICO has tested this and what we find is removing data um, and reducing requirements just leads to a weaker score, which is not the recipe for helping consumers gain access to credit. What we really think the answer is, is to go out and identify alternative um, data, which is data outside of the credit bureau files in order to fill in the picture of this, these consumers' financial profile so that um, wise decisions can be made. Interesting. So alternative data may hold some uh, opportunity in the future. Can you give us an example of alternative data and what we mean by that term? Absolutely, Tom. So, you know, we think about two um, data sources. One is the traditional credit bureau data, and then anything that resides outside of that that could be used for uh, making credit decisions, we refer to as alternative data, meaning alternative to the main three credit bureau files. And so, but we have found that you can use FCRA compliant alternative data sources, such as like phone, cable, utilities, 
uh, public record, um, checking savings account information in order to supplement that traditional credit bureau file in order to develop new innovative scores that can help consumers gain access to credit. You mentioned that uh, for it to be uh, alternative data, it has to reside outside of the traditional credit bureau system. But do any of these sources that you mentioned, such as phone, cable, rent, utilities, you know, the type of obligations most of us have, ever get included in the credit bureau files today? And if they yeah. are included, would they be considered in your traditional FICO scores? Yeah, you would imagine that many of these items would be in um, the credit file, but there is one obstacle that may be not obvious to all, uh, Tom, and that is that we operate in a voluntary reporting system. And what that means is that the data furnishers or lenders or, um, can decide whether they want to report the information into the credit bureaus or not. So there is some um, telco and utility data, as well as rent that is um, permissioned into the credit bureau files. And to the extent it's there, FICO does use it, but it's a very small percentage. Thus the reason to go look outside of the credit bureau file uh, for alternative data sources. Uh, you mentioned scores that use this alternative data. Um, that sounds promising. Uh, can you give more information on what these alternative data scores are? Absolutely. You know, so one of the key things is FICO is an independent analytic firm. And so we are in a position to go and seek out predictive regulatory um, data from outside of the traditional credit bureau files, develop new FICO scores uh, that are incorporating this data, Tom. And so, in fact, we have two models uh, that are out there, one called FICO score XD and one called Ultra FICO that allows for greater inclusion. So FICO XD was, um, it leverages predominantly a data repository that manages uh, telecommunication utility data. Um, and it's designed really for the consumers who are what we, could refer to as credit invisible, or they don't get a FICO score today from the credit bureau file. And so it's a nice um, second chance alternative uh, for lenders. And then we have ultra FICO score, which consumers can opt in and supplement the credit bureau file with access to their checking account data. And so what we're looking for is not necessarily what the transactions are, but is there um, a, a representative um, a positive cash flow in and out of that account, no overdrafts, et cetera. And that can be supplemented to the traditional credit bureau file uh, demonstrating uh, financial wellness. So FICO XD and Ultra FICO scores for consumers to be aware of, they, they found interesting. Do we have any uh, ideas on how many people who can't be scored by the credit bureau data alone could now be scored with these alternative data scores that we mentioned? Um, great question. So, you know, we're super excited to say that we can score another 27 million of that 53 million that we described um, earlier in the conversation today that are unscorable if we only use traditional credit bureau data. And so this is really important in terms of our initiative to help with financial inclusion. And so for those of you who are on and want to learn a little bit more about what we're doing in that area, you can go to uh, www.fico.com forward slash inclusion. And there's a wealth of resources out there uh, to take a look at. Well, thanks a lot for this information, Joanne. Uh, you provided me with some new information that I was not aware of and how um, many of us take for for granted the way the credit system works and that we're all included in that system. But as you indicate, there's a lot of people who aren't and some of the solutions you mentioned will hopefully get those people into mainstream credit. If you're looking to learn more about your FICO scores, we can also provide educational resources. We also provide educational resources and that is to make you aware and help you better understand your credit score. So please visit our site at scorebetterfuture.com for more information. And for in, uh, information about upcoming events and training programs that may be uh, helpful for you if you were to sign up for them. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful guest, Joanne, again, for taking the time to speak with us. And um, we hope everyone out there 
was able to get some learning from this uh, interaction. Thank you, Tom, for including me. It was a great pleasure. And thank you for all that you do in terms of helping uh, make certain that we have this important information uh, in the hands of consumers. Great. Have a, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.